The Sony Alpha 1 is now in stock and shipping, and Canon's going to release a cinema camera based on the R5 in 2022. This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning into The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And to make things just a little bit more exciting, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here, but please look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. And now for the news. Last month, Sony announced a new flagship camera, the Sony Alpha 1. Well, that camera is now in store and shipping, so if you're interested in buying the Sony Alpha 1, please use my affiliate links down below for BNH or Amazon.com as they help support this channel. While you've been waiting patiently for the Canon EOS R1, the high megapixel version of the R5, an entry-level EOS RP replacement, an APS-C R system body, an EOS R Mark II replacement, or an EOS R Mark II, or a whole bunch of lenses, I've got news of yet another cinema camera. This one's supposed to be lower end, and it's based on the Canon EOS R5. That's right, it looks like we'll see an EOS R5C in early 2022. Canon Rumors is calling it the R5C just to keep things easy. Now, I'm a little bit confused. We just got the C70 last year, which sits a little bit higher than the R5 in terms of price. We'll be getting the C50 later this year. So where does the R5C come in? The cinema line seems a little bit overcrowded now, doesn't it? Now, Craig continues saying that the camera will have a slightly different body design than the EOS R5, likely to combat heat and some ergonomic changes. And that's a very good thing. The R5 did come under an awful lot of attack and a lot of criticism for the overheating in 8K and several 4K video modes last year. Now, if they can lick this overheating in the R5C or whatever it's going to be called, it will be very popular. So what will the Canon R5C be capable of? Well, the Canon R5C will definitely have internal ND filters, Canon Log 2 and Canon Log 3. And I'm really happy about that. I was surprised that the FX3 didn't have internal ND filters, and I'm glad Canon isn't going that route. But this part gets me. Canon Rumor Source wasn't sure which image sensor was going to be featured in the camera. Okay, justified or not, the R5 was criticized for 8K overheating limits, but produced very detailed 4K, sorry, 8K video, as you can see in this winter scene. And after firmware 1.1 on the R5, well, the overheating got a whole lot better. Well, got a whole lot better in the fact that you could record for longer, and the camera would cool down a whole lot quicker, enabling you to reshoot again. Now, whether you like the R5 or not, you know it's capable of 8K. I mean, who doesn't? It's what it's known for. Sure, it overheats, but with all the publicity surrounding the R5, why would Canon base a camera off the R5, name it off the R5, and not include the sensor that made it famous? Well, I can think of one reason. It would take sales away from some of their other cinema line. Well, actually, it would take away sales from an awful lot of cameras in the cinema line in a big way if it's priced similar to the R5. And Canon's already planning on releasing a cinema 8K camera this year, and it looks like it's probably going to be priced somewhere around the C300 Mark III. Now, we've been given just enough... Sorry, it's going to be have a minimum price of around where the C300 Mark III is, and I think that's around $11,000, but it could go significantly higher. We've been given just enough information to scratch our collective heads. We don't know the price. Craig classifies this as a CR2, meaning it comes from multiple known and trusted sources. But what do you think? Is this lineup getting a little bit confusing? Are there too many cinema cameras under 10K? What would this cinema camera be priced at and be capable of for you to be interested? Let me know in the comments section down below. But now, let's go behind the scenes. The weather's absolutely great today. It's eight degrees Celsius, and there isn't a cloud in the sky. Now my house faces the sun. I have a patio, so that's all kind of like a cement or prefabricated cement or some sort of brick thingy. And the house is made of bricks, so that amplifies the heat, making it feel like it's 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, I did just jump between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And that's because I grew up in the tropics where everything was in Fahrenheit when I was living there. And then when I moved to Canada, everything shifted to Celsius. So in the cold temperatures, I default to centigrade. And in the warm temperatures, I default to Fahrenheit. So why am I talking to you about this? 
Well, during my lunch break, I was sitting outside relaxing and enjoying my lunch and a bunch of morning doves showed up. So I thought, you know what, I'm inspired. This is part of my spring challenge to myself to create a nature scape in 8K. I'm going to try to create a video somewhere around 10 minutes long that's going to capture spring in Canada, here in northern Canada. So I started off by getting some shots of some morning doves and I think I've got about uh, maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And this isn't going to be a TV show type uh, film. It's not going to be, you know, a few seconds and you, sh you do a cut, you shift to a different scene or a different angle. These are going to be slower cuts. I'm going to shoot for maybe 10, 15 seconds on a particular angle, then shift it to another one and put some rather relaxing music behind that and create what is in my view a nature scape. So hopefully I'll be ready in about two months to put this out there. It really depends on the weather. Right now we've got a beautiful sunny day. It's supposed to be nice and warm for the next two days. But I don't know if it's going to be sunny or not. And then, of course, we're going back into the freezer where it's going to be around 2 to 3 degrees or just above the freezing point. So anything could be off. And then I could maybe not get another good day to shoot for another month almost. I mean, we've had snow and sleet in April. So that's what I've got planned. And if you haven't submitted uh, your Spring Challenge video yet, go ahead and do so. I did get one yesterday, which I've shared with you guys. So if you go back to the video, this video here on the Spring Challenge, you can see a comment down there and Jesse has just go ahead and put out his video. And I got to tell you, when I was watching his video, I could certainly feel spring. I could feel the warmth coming through the video. So thanks a lot, Jesse. I'm a little bit sad. I'm packing up the Sony a7S III after I finish shooting and editing this video. You see, I've had it for two weeks and tomorrow it has to go back to Sony Canada. But a big thanks to Sony Canada for loaning it to me for two weeks. I really do appreciate that. I see it as a huge vote of confidence for the channel. And, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed the camera. I'm not going to go into my details here. I'm going to do a review with the Village Mayor in a couple of weeks. Two to three weeks you should see that live. It really depends on the weather and getting outside because we want to shoot this outside. But, you know, I've really enjoyed shooting with this camera. One of the things i got to say I'm most excited about is I've been shooting for quite a bit of time here. And you know what? I'm not worried about the, I'm not worried about overheat timers. and I'm certainly not re worried about a record timer. I've just been able to record, record, and record. Now, I do have some pressures. In this video, I'm recording in all I, and that gives me, instead of the normal two and a half to five hours I would get on a 128 gig card, I'm only getting about 42 to 50 minutes. So I can't, I don't want to talk for 42 or 50 minutes for what's probably going to be a 10 to 12 minute video anyways. But do you notice a difference in the quality here? So I'm shooting with all I, it's in 4K, and keep in mind that the Sony a7S III sensor is 4K, so it's pixel to pixel. There's no bending or anything like that, so the quality should be a little bit better. But I've been, I've been really excited with this camera. Um, I really wish I could have had this camera a couple of years ago. I, I remember this is one of the, I guess this is one of the early cameras that really got me into looking at rumors and hunting rumors, just like you do. And there was no camera channel out there that focused on news and rumors, so I would have to hunt day in and day out looking for, you know, cameras that interested me, such as the Sony a7S III. It was one of the big ones. The Sony a7S III looked pretty good, but I heard about this a7S II and that the a7S III shouldn't be too far away, so I wanted to see what that would involve. And then, of course, Canon came out with the EOS R, which at the time I wasn't very enamored with. I, I, I thought it was still much behind the competition. And then I ended up getting the R5. Why? Well, because Canon did an excellent job of marketing it, but also it came out about a month, month and a half ahead of the Sony a7S III. And what I thought I could do strategically, I wasn't 100% sure if the R5 was the right camera for me, but I knew it was hard to get. I knew it was going to be a big deal. So I decided to go ahead and purchase it and use it as my main camera channel. So it certainly improved the quality for me. And it's been my default camera ever since. But I got to let you know something. Since I've had the a7S III, I really wish I could keep this camera and not send it back. I would like to use this as my studio camera and yes, shoot in all eye all the time because I don't have to worry about anything. When I sit down and do these long videos, I'm not thinking about, oh, um, is, it, is it still recording or not? Uh, is it the overheat now? Or is it going to be the, something else? And I'm always looking down, I'm looking, oh, <laughs> what's my timer? Or I'm looking at camera connect and it's very, very frustrating. Whereas the Sony, the great thing about this camera is I can just get down to work and I really, really do like that. Now, I do really wish they used the CF Express Type B because CF Express Type A, oh, they're a wee bit expensive. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 
B90 UHS, S, UHS 2 SD cards along with a dual UHS 2 card reader. Or you could also win a Yulanzi LED light package with accent lights, underwater lights and various other flat panel lights to light up your subject or as a good starter kit for starting your own YouTube channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles to two lucky viewers once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers. And then I'll offer up different, I'll be up, no, I'm not going to offer up any subscribers. I'll be offering up different prize bundles all the way up to 100,000 subscribers. And once I reach that significant milestone, I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.